All right, Matthew, here we go. We got lesson 1.3.2, angles formed by transversals. All right, so we've got copies of a parallelogram that have been translated. Remember, translate is where, like, where you put your finger on it, and then you just move it left or right or up and down, or a combination of left and right or up and down. So it's a rigid motion. It's going to keep its shape each time. So what do we know about parallelograms? Well, we know that parallelograms, stated in the name, the opposite sides are parallel. So the opposite sides are parallel. We know that, so this one and this one would be parallel, and then this one and this one would be parallel. Uh, we know that the opposite sides are congruent. So that means that I would know that this angle here and the, or the side here and that side there are the same. And then this side and this side would be the same. Uh, we know that the opposite angles are congruent. So when we say opposite angles, we are talking about, let's do green, uh, like this angle here should be the same as this angle down here. And then this angle here is the same as this angle over there. Lots of stuff on our uh, shape here. We could even say that the consecutive angles, the angles like in a row, that they're supplementary, like this angle here and this angle here should add up to 180 degrees, and this angle in here and this angle here should add up to 180 degrees. So that's an extra thing. Maybe we haven't covered that yet. The consecutive angles are supplementary. All right, what do we know about translations? Well, we just said that a second ago. Uh, a translation uh, shifts the object up and down or left and right. Oops, object. I can't spell. Object up, down, left, right. And more importantly to this, we know that it's a rigid motion. And rigid motion means that it's going to stay the same shape. So it's going to be congruent. So I got my congruent sign there. So it's going to be a congruent shape that we have made when we do that. So I got some mail. All right. So that means if this object is what we started with and the rest of this thing has been created with, um, gosh, words. If this has been created with a uh, uh, translation, then all of these have to be exactly the same. And since they're all the same, the same facing, so if I translate this one down to here, that means this is still parallel. And then if I translate this one down to here, it's still parallel. And then that means this side is still parallel to this side over here. Now for the angles, what it means is this angle up here is the same as this angle down here because it's been translated. And then this angle here is the same as that angle there. So we've got the same shape reproduced over and over and over again. But what we're really going to look at today is something called parallel lines with transversals. So here I've got parallel lines, and then these things would be called transversals, anything crossing the parallel lines. Now what we can see here is when we have parallel lines, that that transversal is creating congruent shapes, uh, congruent pairs of shapes. We're going to call those corresponding angles. So looking at this picture right here, let's just pretend that this picture right here is, uh, maybe it's like this right here. So if I extended this out, let's pretend that this shape here is this shape here. And what we see here is that we have a lot of congruent angles that we can mark. So like this is M and 
L, whatever. So this is kind of part of this big old picture that I've drawn right there. So the transversal is a line that intersects two parallel lines. So we would call this line JK, that line there, that's my transversal. Corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal. So they're going to be on the same side, so they're either going to be on the left side or they're going to be a light right side. One of them is interior. and one exterior. Interior and exterior just means between these two parallel lines, this would be the interior. And then the exterior is outside of the parallel line. So this is exterior over here. And this is exterior down here. So interior is between these two parallel lines. Exterior is outside the parallel lines. And the last thing is they touch different parallel lines. So looking at that description of it, I've got eight angles here, A, B, C, D, W, X, Y, Z. I want to look for the ones that are corresponding. So I can tell same side of transversal. Let's start with A. A is exterior. And then on the same side of transversal, W is interior. And they touch two different parallel lines. So A and W would be corresponding angles. So A and W, those two are corresponding angles. Now over here, C is interior and Y is exterior. They're on the same side of the transversal, they're on the left side of that transversal, and C touches the top parallel line, and Y touches the bottom one. So C and Y are corresponding angles. So that's everything on the left side of the transversal. On the right side of the transversal, since it has to be on the same side of the transversal, B is exterior, X is interior, and they're touching two different parallel lines. B touches the top line, X touches the other one. So we've got B and X. And then finally, D is on the interior, and Z is on the exterior. They're on the same side of transversal. D is touching the top line. Z is touching the bottom line. Did I say that right? I don't know. You get what I mean. So D and Z. All right, now... Based on this thing that I've seen here where I've got parallel lines, so these two are my parallel lines up here, these two angles would be corresponding angles. And I can see by this picture up here that it looks like corresponding angles have the same exact measurement. So the next thing that we need to know about corresponding angles is corresponding angles are congruent. So now I know that angle A and angle W have the same measurement. They are congruent to each other. C and Y are congruent because they're corresponding angles. B and X are congruent angles. D and Z, those are also congruent angles. So we've got a bunch of congruent angles. Now suppose that angle B is 60 degrees. All right, so what if this angle was 60 degrees? What are the measurements of all the other angles? Ooh, this is a good one. So if this is 60, we should now be able to find out what every other angle is. Well, we already said that B and X are congruent to each other. So I'm going to call this one 60 as well. Okay, so now I know both of those, those are 60 because they're corresponding angles. But remember from the last lesson, these are vertical angles. 
and vertical angles are congruent. So that one has to be 60. And then we just said over here that C and Y were uh, cor corresponding angles, so those are congruent. So C and Y, those both must be 60. Okay, so I've got four of the angles. I can now actually find the other angles because of linear pairs. Uh, 60, this B and A, those two angles have to be linear pairs because they make a straight line. So linear pairs, like we said before, those are supplementary. So, oops, they add up to 180. Jeez. They add up to 180, so we get 120 degrees for that one. So if that's 120, this is 120 because they're vertical angles. If this is 120, A, W is 120 because A and W are corresponding angles. And then if D is 120, Z is 120 because they're corresponding angles and they're congruent to each other. So when you have parallel lines and a transversal, you can know just one angle and you know all the other seven angles. So we can see here that uh, B, C, X, and Y, these are all 60 degrees. And then the other angles, A, D, W, and Z, those are all 120 degrees. All right. Are corresponding angles always congruent? So here I've got two parallel lines. And which one is going to be the corresponding angle with 135? Well, this is the transversal. It's kind of flipped on its side from the other picture. But I can tell that this angle here and this angle here are corresponding angles. This is exterior. It's not in between the two parallel lines. This is interior. This one's touching this parallel line. This one's touching this parallel line. So those are corresponding angles. So I know that X would have to be 135 degrees. And we could actually solve for Y here and find out that Y is also going to be 135 degrees because of vertical angles here. So that's what we were saying before, is that when we got parallel lines and transversal, the corresponding angles are congruent. But what if the lines are not parallel? So these two lines are not parallel. This is still technically called a transversal because it's a line crossing two other lines. But you can see here that this angle here is obtuse, but this angle here is acute. So they can't be the same measurement. So what we're finding out here is corresponding angles are only congruent if these two lines are parallel. So corresponding angles are congruent if the two lines are parallel. If they're not parallel, they can't be congruent. So we can't use this rule for corresponding angles are congruent unless the lines are parallel to each other. So this one, x does not equal 135. This one did work because they were parallel. This one doesn't work because they're not parallel. All right, almost there. Last few problems. So let's start here. So I got parallel lines here. I want to work out what this angle way up here is. Let's use our angles. This angle here is 115. And then this one would be corresponding. Exterior, interior. Same side of the transversal. This one's working as our transversal. So these two are the same. This is 115. All right, now let's look at this parallel line up here and this parallel line down here. This angle and this angle are corresponding angles. So this is 115. Because this is exterior, this is interior. We're talking about these two parallel lines. So they're going to be congruent to each other. But X is not corresponding. It's going to be linear pairs with this one. So to solve for x, I'm just going to say x plus 115 equals 180. Subtract 115 from both sides, and I get x is equal to 65. Next one. Okay, so this one, we know that this angle is 53. I've got parallel lines with a transversal. 
So I can say that this angle here is also 53. Okay, so we had transversal here, parallel lines. This is interior, that's exterior. Those are corresponding angles. So that's 53. Now the question becomes, is this one corresponding with this one? And we're going to have to say no. It's not correspond. Well, it is corresponding, but the lines are not parallel. This line is not parallel with that one. Therefore, I cannot say that this is 53 and this is 53. We don't have enough information to find out what X is. So this is not possible to solve. We can only use congruent angles with the corresponding angles when the lines are parallel. Now, if they were asking for this angle, sure, we could have solved that because these two are both 53. But I cannot skip down to here because now these two become the lines and this is the transversal. And these, although being corresponding, we don't have parallel lines. So unless the parallel lines, unless we have parallel lines, the corresponding angles are not going to be congruent unless they're parallel lines. All right, now in this one, we have everything parallel. This one's parallel to this one. This one's parallel to this one. So we can work our way around until we get the, they're using corresponding angles. So I'm going to say that this angle here and this angle here are congruent because we got parallel lines and a transversal. Corresponding angles are congruent. So this one has to be 4x minus 25. Now going the other direction, I'm going to use parallel lines here. And this is the transversal. That means this angle and this angle are corresponding angles. So we got 4x minus 25. Now we've got vertical angles. And we found out on the last notes that vertical angles are congruent. So 4x minus 25 should be the same as 3x plus 10. So we're going to write an equation. 4x minus 25 equals 3x plus 10. I'd subtract 3x from both sides and get x minus 25 equals 10. And then I'd add 25 to both sides and get 35 degrees. The end. All right, guys. Math hard. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.